Welcome to the second video in this three video series on minerals and soil resources. This video will focus on the economics, useful minerals, mining, and refining. Before we go through the learning targets, I want to point out the diagram in the top right corner of this slide. You may want to pause the video and just look through the flow chart that describes the role of non-fuel minerals in the U.S. economy. Estimated values in 2016. It's pretty interesting. Learning targets for this video. I can list uses of minerals that are economically important and critical to maintaining my lifestyle. I can describe the primary methods of mineral extraction. I can draw a diagram showing how base metals are separated from ore in smelting. And I can provide examples of environmental impacts of mining, refining, and reclamation. Let's start out thinking about our need for minerals, our demand for minerals. So in this little cartoon, we see that every American born today will need a variety of different minerals throughout their lifetime. In fact, they will need 3.7 million pounds of minerals, metals, and fuels in their lifetime. That includes 773 pounds of zinc and 911 pounds of lead, 18,000 pounds of phosphate rock, and 5,417 pounds of the ore of aluminum, which is called bauxite, 75,000 pounds of cement. What are we doing with all these things? Well, we're using them to maintain our lifestyles. So in this picture, you can see some of the different major ores that are mined, aluminum, chromium, mercury, silver, gypsum, and others. And I'd like you to pause just for a second here and think about which of these categories are important to you to maintain your lifestyle. Which minerals do you need? Which minerals are making up products that you demand? Thinking about ores. Ores contain a high enough concentration of a mineral to make them profitable to mine and to refine. This is all about the economics. If a mining operation isn't able to make money, they don't mine. So there are some ores that are high grade and there are some ores that are lower grade. And what we mine depends on where the prices are. So if the price of a commodity, a metal, goes up, we can mine lower grade ores and still make a profit. If the price declines, a higher grade is needed to produce enough of the base metal from that ore in order to make a profit. There are five pie charts on this slide. They show the uses of copper and of other metals, so rare earth metals, silver, nickel, and others by the US. Some of these diagrams are a couple of years old, but in general it gives you a good idea of what the uses of some of those base metals are and what percentage of the base metals that are mined are used for those particular categories of, of items. Turning now to thinking about extracting and processing base metals. So there are three basic steps. First we have to explore and identify a deposit that is economically viable for extraction. The process of doing that is becoming more and more sophisticated and involves more technology than it has in the past. It allows mining companies to identify deposits that are more profitable. Once they've identified that deposit, they need to determine the best extraction process based on the deposit. Can they surface mine or do they need to use an underground mining technique? Then they need to consider the post-extraction processing. How will they refine that ore? What will it cost to refine that ore? And how will they reclaim the land? So let's turn to looking at the different types of extraction. Basically, we have surface mining and we have subsurface mining. There are two main types of surface mining, open pit and strip surface mining. In general, surface mining is less expensive than underground mining. It requires the removal of overburden, of soil, of vegetation, in order to remove the ore from the ground for refining. Shown in the top right corner is an example of an open pit surface mine. 
These types of mines are common for things like sand and gravel. Once that product is removed, it can be refined. Shown in the middle picture is an example of a strip mining operation where the minerals are extracted from a trench. And in the bottom picture, you can see what's known as a spoil bank that's created when that rock material, the overburden and the waste rock is piled to the sides of that strip that they're mining. Anything that's considered clean spoil may later be used in the land reclamation phase. Moving on to types of subsurface mining. Subsurface mining includes shaft mining and slope mining. In general, subsurface mining, because it is more expensive, it's more dangerous, it is used to extract ores that are too deep for surface mining techniques. It does produce less damage to the surface as they are removing the ore for refining. In shaft mining, a vertical shaft is drilled down to an ore level and the ore is broken up underground and the ore is then removed through that vertical shaft. Some of these mines can be exceedingly deep, like the kimberlite diamond mines in Africa. This process includes developing some sort of lift system to transport the miners up and down from the surface level down to the ore level. Slope mining is useful for more shallow deposits. A sloped passageway is built that often contains a conveyor belt or some sort of cart system on tracks that allows the ore to be broken up and then transported back up to the surface along a sloped passageway. Once the ore has been removed from the ground and removed from the extraction site, it needs to be processed. So that ore is often processed through a process that we call smelting. Smelting removes the base metal from the ore by using heat and a chemical reducing agent to break down the ore into the base metal and the waste product, which is called slag. You can see a diagram here that shows a cartoon of a smelting operation where an ore enters the system, a blast furnace system from the top Hot air moving upwards helps to break that ore down through the chemical reducing process into molten iron, in this case, or slag. On the bottom left, you can see a worker in a blast furnace operation who is separating out that molten base metal. There are environmental impacts from mining and from refining ores. First of all, in the top right picture, you can see a mountaintop that has been completely removed because there was a coal mining operation there. Reclamation of, of surface mining locations is expensive. Now, most developed countries do have policies in place that help with governing the reclamation process. But still, removing the overburden, the soil, the vegetation exposes that land to erosive processes. And oftentimes, runoff pollutes waterways and groundwater. So you can see in the bottom right picture the runoff from a mine, which has become exceedingly acidic as it flows through the mine wastes and the tailings. Oftentimes, local entities ask for the water that's being pumped out of underground mines to be re-injected afterwards, and there are some problems environmentally with doing that. I think it's time to review our learning targets and head off to your mastery check quiz. So before we talk about the learning targets, nice little map here showing the world's copper deposits. You might want to take a look at that. Learning targets. I can list uses of minerals that are economically important and critical to maintaining my lifestyle. I can describe the primary methods of extraction I can draw a diagram showing how base metals are separated from ore in smelting, and I can provide examples of environmental impacts of mining, refining, and reclamation. Take your mastery check quiz. See you in class.